Hey, what's up guys? Bo HD here from PhoneDog.com. This is the Microsoft Surface Duo. It's a, a new smartphone of sorts from Microsoft that's in a bit of a class of its own because of this really unique foldable clamshell design that's really not much bigger than a traditional smartphone when it's in your pocket. But it can be turned into a massive 8.1 inch tablet when it's completely folded open. So it's I don't know, it's a little bit uh, weird to review because it's not traditional in any sense of the word. It is a beautiful concept phone, but really nothing more than that, a concept foldable smartphone. Now I purchased this device for $1,400 of my own cash, did not talk to Microsoft at all, and I bought it with the intent of using it as my main smartphone. But after popping my SIM card in here and installing all of my apps and copying over my data from my old phone, I quickly realized that this phone is just not ready because its current state in the, in the software is unusable. Now, I've used a lot of phones, but I think this might be the buggiest phone I've ever used. One of the biggest issues I've found with this phone is the accelerometers, which are absolutely critical for a device of this nature because you're constantly flipping it around and using the different displays. The accelerometers in here, they really need to be incredibly accurate, fast, and consistent but they're not. I mean, more than half the time, uh, they just don't understand which orientation I'm holding this phone, um, and there's considerable lag when orienting the displays. Now, I could definitely go into more detail, but I wanna make this video as, as quick and concise as possible, so that's really one area where the software definitely needs some work, the accelerometers. The other is just with navigating the phone. A simple thing is navigating the phone. A lot of times the navigation buttons and the gestures, they just don't work for whatever reason. I've had the entire bottom row of apps just disappear once and I've also had the displays just go completely unresponsive while the orientation of uh, the displays was just spinning around constantly. So I could hardly even actually turn off the phone or restart the phone to fix that problem because when I press the power button to uh, pull up the menu here, the display would just reorientate itself and the menu would go away and I'd have to try again. So just like little issues like that are all over the place with this phone. And then on top of that, you got your app issues where most apps just don't know what to do with a piece of hardware like this. They don't know how to run properly on both displays, let alone one. Facebook Messenger is one app that will detect both displays even when you're only using one, making it hard to close out of messages and type messages. But the biggest issue I've had is that when in full screen mode, apps won't know where the bezel is in the middle of the device. So it'll cut off content and create for a poor experience. Now, Microsoft apps do actually do a pretty good job showing off the capabilities of this dual screen concept, but it could be you know years before we see most of the popular apps on the Play Store get updated to support a device like this. And I will add, I've, I've still had some issues with the Microsoft apps and the uh, dual app shortcuts that are on the home screen. Sometimes when I, I launch those, they will force close and there will be little minor bugs here and there. The other big issue I've had was with the camera because it's located inside the device right here. Um, if you want to use it as a main camera, you're gonna have to fold the phone backwards and use the opposite display, which is a little bit awkward to use to say the least. But if you do get it right and the accelerometers detect which display you're actually using and you want to use and the software does its job, you'll run into issues where the apps will think it's the selfie camera and they will actually invert the camera so that when you pan left, it'll pan right and vice versa. So that's a little bit annoying and you'll have to switch cameras pretty frequently in the apps that you're using in order to adjust for that. Now, once again, I could go on and on and on and list every single little issue I've had with the software. But the point of, of just talking about this and stopping right here is just to say that the software is extremely half-baked and it makes the phone unusable. And yes, I, I think Microsoft could very well issue updates to fix many of the software bugs that we've seen and I've discussed. But given how many issues there are and especially how many of the issues um, have to do with specific apps themselves, it's gonna take at least several months, maybe even years for Microsoft to get this right. Now I know Android 11 is right around the corner and it will natively support foldable phones like this one. So that definitely should help, uh, but just don't expect it to fix a lot of the issues here. It's gonna take some time. It's just pretty amazing to me though that Microsoft shipped this phone in its current state 
because it's literally unusable. And anyone who buys this phone for $1,400 is gonna be disappointed and they're gonna be probably mad at Microsoft unless they just have so much money to burn that they only bought it to marvel at the beautiful hardware, which is really the only reason one would buy this phone. Heck, it's the reason why I bought this phone. I mean, look at it. This hardware is freaking cool. And the advertising, the ads, the videos that they've made and published on YouTube make this phone look all the better. But let's talk about the hardware for a second. The hardware is truly amazing. And it's one of the best hardware experiences I've had in recent memory. So first of all, the device is extremely thin, almost impossibly thin, considering there has to be room for a battery, a processor, and everything else that makes a phone work. The hinge is the nicest hinge I've ever used. I never thought I would say that. It's rigid enough to hold the phone open at any angle. And I just love how it sits completely flat on a table or you can prop it up like a TP to watch movies or YouTube videos. Microsoft did a great job here with this hinge. The build as a whole, it feels premium with glass all around and metal accents. It feels like a device of the future and I truly think the hardware is ahead of its time. With that said, because it's so thin, look how thin this thing is. Uh, there's only so big of a camera sensor you can include here without making it protrude from the rear of, of the build here. Marquez actually pointed this out in his video. One of the panels of the Surface Duo is nearly as thick or as thin as the camera module of the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. So bigger is definitely better when it comes to camera sensors. And well, the sensor in the Duo is pretty darn small. So that results in some noisy photos and low light, some pretty weak details. You can get some passable images in the right conditions, but camera quality as a whole, especially when compared to other current smartphone cameras, it's pretty awful. So, you know, as a tech reviewer, I gotta provide some solutions, some recommendations for the company when I review their devices. I would recommend Microsoft find a way to include a better camera sensor in the next version of the Duo. I'd also recommend uh, including at least two sensors, one on the front and one on the back to kind of help mitigate the camera issues I mentioned earlier in this video, where uh, a lot of the apps think that you're using a front camera or a selfie camera or a rear camera vice versa, it, it just gets really confusing for the apps if there's only one camera. Wireless charging would also be pretty nice here. You could just slap it down on a nightstand. Um, that would be cool, but it's not a really a huge deal breaker for me. Uh, what did surprise me though was actually the battery life. It was really good. Uh, I thought that it would be pretty abysmal considering just how thin this device is. Like how could they fit a big battery in here? They just can't. But uh, somehow they made it so that the phone just sips battery juice you can get several hours of usage somehow. I don't know how you can, but you can, and that's cool. So the hardware overall, it's fantastic, but the problem is the software, which needs to be on the same par, and it's clearly not, not even close. So uh, whatever you do, just don't buy this phone. Go into a Best Buy or a Microsoft store and play around with this device. Uh, just don't spend $1,400 on it. It's just not ready for prime time. And maybe I'll, uh, I'll follow up in several months with a, a new review to see how Microsoft addressed some of these bugs. But most likely they're still gonna be there in some form. So that's my review of the Microsoft Surface Duo. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys right back here in the next one. See ya.